Forecasters predict an above normal hurricane season, which is devastating news for one community in Louisiana that's already disappearing under the water. Isle de Jean Charles, a small island off the coast, has lost more than 90 percent of its land over the last 60 years, over 90 percent. In our Eye on Earth series, Mireya Villarreal got a rare look at the huge challenges facing the islanders. Mireya, please tell us there's a plan in place to help these people. Hey, well, good morning. Look, there is no doubt that this island is disappearing quickly. Both federal and state governments are stepping in to help resettle the less than 60 people still living there. But the project is two years in and not a single family has agreed to move because they just don't trust that this is the right thing to do. The history of Isle de Jean Charles is as rich as the oil siphon from Louisiana's Gulf Coast. Once home to hundreds of Native American families, it's now quickly disappearing. And so are the tribes that once lived here. Yeah, you can see the water line way right up here, you know. People are still cleaning up after Hurricane Barry hit in early July as a weak Category 1 storm. People are going to need a lot of help to rebuild and stuff, you know, and it's... It's just heartbreaking. When Barry blew through this area, the road here was completely washed away, and all the residents that decided not to evacuate had to be rescued by Coast Guard. The island's natural barriers are being eaten away by intruding saltwater from the Gulf, and the state's levee project protects most of Louisiana's southern coast, but leaves the island out. Why were you guys left out of that? We have no idea. This is the only business. Laura Ann Chason belongs to the Huma tribe and owns the only business left on the island. Back in 2016, a federal grant worth $48 million was awarded to the state of Louisiana for a resettlement project that would move anyone off the island to a new community nearly 40 miles north. But not everyone is happy that this is the only solution. Happen. Do you feel like there's some distrust in how the project is happening? Oh, it's definitely distrust. I mean, you talking to native people and government and so I've never known them to have a trusted relationship and it's no different with this project. When you hear people refer to the tribe and also to this island as America's first climate change refugees. That's such an insult. Why? The word. Just we're not no refugees. I mean our people has been discriminated over and over again and to say that is just so disrespectful. Yeah, everybody used to live back here. People were living back there back in the 70s. Yes, yeah. Steve Billiot, a local shrimper, took us out on the bayou. All around us we saw what was once Louisiana land. Now it's a lost world surrounded by trees stuck in the sea like forks. This all used to be land. The land sinking. And this is part of it. I mean, this land right it here. Is. We took the 40 mile trip inland to see the proposed site. Pat Forbes is the executive director of the resettlement project. How many people have signed on the dotted line? We haven't asked anybody to sign on a dotted line yet. There are supposed to be 150 homes built here by 2022, but so far, only 27 families have shown interest. Nobody wants to leave the island, but they recognize for the most part that they're not going to be able to live there forever. This island once boasted more than 22,000 acres. Struck by the consequences of climate change, today it measures around 320 acres with just 35 structures still livable. How does it make you feel when you see the land that's belonged to your family, like literally being washed away? That's hard. I mean, to see what's been done and it's out of their hands, it, it's... It saddens me to see that. Mm -hmm. If anyone decides to resettle and leave, they won't lose ownership of their homes, but they can't make improvements or money on them. Meanwhile, a storm system could develop in the Gulf this weekend, bringing half a foot of rain, which could bring more flooding to the Isle de Jean Charles. Oof. It's just so horrible what these people have to face every day. I know a lot of the concern also is on dredging from the oil and gas industry, which is huge there, and that is something that is compounding the climate change problem, too. I mean, it definitely is. Look, we're looking at climate change here, right? We're looking mm -hmm. at tall water intrusion. We're looking at rising sea levels. But also, I mean, there was a levee project that was constructed there that leaves them out. That's part of the issue. And also the dredging, yeah. yes. is So it's compounded on this poor island. In any case, the clock is ticking for those folks. Maria, thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely.